Hello everybody, welcome to another week. It is Monday afternoon now, um, obviously back to school. Um, so I'm down the plot now for a couple of hours. I'm going to do some tidying up, I'm going to do some de-weeding, get the beds ready for the marrows because the marrows are flying away here. I'll show you what I like before um, I head off and get started. I have just given everything a quick feed um, with some organic feeds with the nettle tea. So I've given a drink for the onions, the quality onions down in the onion house. And I've also had a look in here. Um, the, the, the melon's not looking too clever for itself, to be honest, as well. So I've taken this melon from the polytunnel and brought it in here. So hopefully, I think it's just because it's a bit moist, it's a bit damp. I think it's been sitting in some water um, with the heavy rains that we've had. It's just taking up the water in the pot so I'm going to let it dry out a bit and see if it recovers but anyhow I'm going to get started get sorted and uh, do a bit more planting out today so I've made a start here I'm next door um, I want to get things tidied up uh, especially with the stuff that I'm not putting cover over the top of as I showed you last week the weeds will dominate so I've come into the next the garden next door and I'll show you what I've done so far so as you can see, the leaks and everything are sorted from last week. I'm going to start, after I've finished telling you what I've done here, um, I'm going to start taking the weeds out of that bed and getting things planted into there direct. No dig, because <laughs> I haven't done anything with it. <laughs> so anything I put in there, I'm not expecting anything out. But I've got stuff to plant, I'm going to put it in any case. Um, so this is what I've done here, these three beds. Um, I've basically getting the, the rotavator out um, of the car and uh, I've rotivated these three beds again um, I've chopped I've, I've, first of all I took all the weeds out by hand that was left in and um, the stuff that you can see the greenery on the top here is just that just on the top that'll die down um, it's got no roots on them anymore uh, so I've tilled all this over um, and I've sorted the paths out as well now as I told you last week this is going to be for the new marrow patch for this year so I'm going to put some marrows in here I'm going to have one at the top of there I'm going to have one down here and I'm going to have one at the top of there as well. And I'll just let them do their thing over these three beds. Now, Dave Shaw, Lockman Wizard, tiny tip. He did mention last week it would be a lot easier. So that's what I've done as well. I've cleared the paths. I was originally just going to let it big, flat bit of land. But why? Why not? I've just, I'm going to level all this. In fact, I'm not even going to level it off. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, I'm going to feed over the top of it again with some uh, pen manure pellets. And then uh, that's it done for feeding for this year. And uh, when it comes to next year, I will be putting manure on these beds. Every single bed down here. Because now I've got the big rotavator. I can get them all turned over in relatively quick fashion. So it's a start. Uh, I've also planted some more dahlias in as well. So I've got two more dahlias here, which are starting to, uh, to come through. And I've also got new daily are there um, and another one down towards the end as well but these are all starting to come up nicely left things ones that were left in from last year as you can see they're coming up here hardly tip with dahlias is when you see three coming up just nip the side shoots out i'll just nip them ones out and that'll put all the energy into that one flower there so as you can see they're going to be flowering not long there is lots of things you can do, you can stop them. So if I pull it down this, I don't want that to flower. I'll wait for these two to come through. I'll just nip that off. There's lots of different things you can do, but I'm not interested. I just want to be a case of flowering out. I'll nip the dead, I'll deadhead them, just like everything else um, when they come up. Look at this weed here. I've been right in here, taking all the weeds out that I've missed right up against it. Still missed one, just like the tomatoes, isn't it? <laughs> so that's what I've done in any case. So next task i'm going to do i've just wiped off the top of the surface weeds on top of here i've got this condor potato that i've had in the pot i'm going to dig a hole i'm just going to pop that condor potato down here now them two are the big potatoes that i showed you previously so we'll see what happens with these this is going to be like an experiment basically we'll see what happens what i've done is this the marrow pot the, the marrow the old marrow patch the pumpkin bed and um, this one is looking a bit yellow to be honest I'll have to see what kind of feed it needs because um, I did give it a lot of feed um, like manure and all sorts in here but it's definitely needing something else you can tell just by the look of it like it's that one over there as well that's nice and green that one because it's still in the pot um, I'm just getting rid of all the surface weeds off the top of this section here because obviously if I just leave them to go it will just slowly if I leave it that's what happens so as you can see just weeds taking over I need to get in there obviously still but um done that de-weeded all of that i've also weeded out around the giant turnips and all as well giant uh, sweet um looks like the pigeons have been at it which i was expecting but uh they're just getting left nothing to show so 
they're not going to be massive, massive, but we'll see what happens with them in any case. So yeah. There is onions and also there are giant um, garlic, elephant garlic. So you can see it's dying right back there. So I am going to get this lifted up today. So see what they, they're like. I'm not expecting anything from them. Um, to be honest, the, 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 the ones I've pulled up so far don't look that big and clever. So well, we'll see what happens with them ones in any case. And same with them onions over there. They still get used in any case. Now last week I said that I needed to put something on around these cucumbers to stop them from getting wet. So I've gotten some collars here and I'm going to slowly, gently place the collars over the top. Okay, so just like the um, the tomatoes, basically from the cucumbers, the stems also produce root. Um, so what I've done here, I've gotten some just collars. And all these are pipe. That's it. So I've just sunk the pipe in. I've actually put this one back in actually because I started producing a few more roots out of the stem. So hopefully it'll get a second kick of life. And it's actually, even though I pulled it out a couple of days ago, it's still all right at the top. But we'll see what happens. Get it a chance, like I say. Um, the rest of them are all doing all right. I've resorted out the stems and stuff like that as well. So then I had the, the, um, the stakes and also filled up these this with the soil that's around it and just leveled everything off here so that should stop the stems from getting wet um something else i want to show you on here now it's important to know your weeds now in here i've noticed and i've spotted a few things here and if realistically you could just pull them all out if you didn't if you, if you wanted to now if you remember this section here had the two tables across, so I had one table here and the table, other table was behind us. So this is where Kyle was doing the sowing for the seeds, for the um, for the, the brassicas and stuff. Um, and as you can see down here, I've actually got a few different bits and pieces. So knowing your weeds is imperative. So like there, that's a weed, that's a weed. That's a weed there as well, it's a nettle weed. Like these are as well, nothing up there, apart from that there, that's a tomato from last year's seeds. Um, so we've got here is another tomato. You can see everybody you should know what a tomato looks like. So that's a tomato there. Now these here, something different. These are kind of a brassica. You can tell by the, the sort of bum-shaped leaves. <laughs> so that's one there. This is one here as well. And I know from experience that a lot of these are going to be, I mean that there, that looks like a broccoli or some form of a brassica like that. But these here are swede. You can tell because I've got like little furry, furry leaves there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave them in there. Get a catch crop. There's no no need to leave them. So this is where knowing your weeds comes in handy. Now I'll not have any down that way. So all I've done is just scat, scrat it around the tops of the soil. Look, there's another tomato there. Look. So I will be pulling them up when the time comes because I don't want tomatoes in my cucumber bed. Um, but when it comes to the sweet and stuff, I can just leave that there. That's not going to cause any bother. So there you go, know your weeds, know what's a weed and what's a vegetable. Now I keep hearing the same thing, weeds are just flowers in the wrong place. Sorry they're not, they're weeds. <laughs> they come back, they're perennial and they're a bloody nightmare because they keep self-seeding <laughs> in the wrong places. So yes, but they're not flowers in the wrong place, they're weeds in the wrong place. Weeds don't belong in my beds. <laughs> Right, time to move on. I'm gonna go and lift that elephant garlic now. And that's all the elephant garlic taken out. Um, like I said, I just had it for stock basically. Um, as you can see, the sowings that I did in the, between the garlic, the beetroot are coming along fine here. I'm just waiting for them all to bulk out. And when they start bulking out, I'll be able to have some more. What I can actually do in here, I actually start sowing some carrots down the middle. So that's exactly what I'm going to do next. And then I'll be like catch crop after that as well. So I'll sow some root veg. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, five rows of carrots. Um, and I'll get them in once I've cleaned off this garlic because that's kind of therapeutic for me, to be honest. One of the things that I've actually missed about growing garlic this year is uh, obviously harvesting it. Now, you should only be harvesting garlic, basically when the first four, um, once the scapes, you cut the scapes off, um, then when the leaves start dying back to this uh, brownie color, 
that's when it's safe enough to do so. Um, now, one thing I have missed with the elephant, because the only reason I've grown elephant garlic this year is because I noticed in the past two years I've grown it, it hasn't developed any rust. So this is really good for me um, with the, the leeks and onions and stuff. So one, th one thing I do like is cleaning them off because as you can see, it's all mucky and everything. And you don't have to actually have any water to clean these off. All you got to do is just take the outside scapes off, the, the scapes, the outside leaves and that'll provide you with a lovely clean outer section and that's just after taking one skin off as you can see these are elephant garlic that's the reason as to why they form these little combs yeah, I can actually grow elephant garlic from these combs it's like a three or four year process but just look at that there you go it smells phenomenal as well now elephant garlic it's basically it's supposed to be really big this has split in a couple of different cloves here i can feel it but what i'm going to do i'm going to leave the full length on uh, and i'm going to hang this somewhere to dry so that it can get all the moisture out but there's one done i'm going to sit and i'm going to do the rest of them now as well watch a bit of tv on my phone just sit and relax so i've got a few different ones uh, here which are one i don't think are going to be any good and two um the ones that are good and three, the ones that I think are going to rot, basically, from what I can see. I'll go through each one of them. And um, basically, these three, or these four here, are just no good. They're not going to last, so I'm going to get I'm going to rid of them. Um, I've got two here, which are going to be no good neither, because on the bottom, you can see, they're starting to rot. So I'll put them to one side as well. I've got five here, which I think are going to basically rot as well. But I'm going to hang them up in any case, hang these ones up, because these ones should be alright. So I'm going to just layer them um, and see what they're like. And then I've got the bulk. Now, I only put 12 cloves in, and that was it. So, even with those 12 cloves, I still managed to get a good handful. Different size elephant garlic. I'll get the three biggest ones out, and we'll see how big they are. Now, this is elephant garlic. Reason it's called elf and garlic because it's massive. <laughs> so there's three good cloves. The biggest clove is this one here, which I'll show you against my hand. See the size of that? It's absolutely massive. I barely get my hand around it. But that is a good clove. Now one here, they're probably going to get one, two, three, four, oh five in there. So if we go five off the ones that I've got. That's five, ten, fifteen. 20, we've got it. I've already doubled, doubled the amount of cloves that I've put in. And I think each clove, because this is a bulb, each single clove is 50 pence each when you buy it in the shops. So not a bad investment, to be honest. So um, good stuff. I'm pleased. Uh, I've managed to get my garlic up. Happy days. You guys know, I'll show you my successes and I'll also show you my failures as well. So last year, the sets that I got free, um, I popped the sets in the same place as I did the year before, because I did have a good result the year before. Um, I just left them to see how things have went. Well, they turned out like shallots, basically. <laughs> Here's the white, white onions. I mean, they're all edible at the end of the day. And here's the red ones. Once again, all edible. So I'm going to get all of these sorted. I'm going to get them all on the drying rack and leave them to dry off for the next couple of weeks. Okay, I'm going to do something I haven't done before, and that's direct sown. Now, I have just done some direct sown there of carrots. These were actually the first time I direct sowed beetroot. I did used to do them clumps, and I'm going to do them clumps next year as well. So I've actually just sown some Autumn King here. I've done two rows, a row down here and a row down there, just like I did with the beetroot with the garlic. And I've also put some Harlequin, the different coloured carrots down the middle of them as well. This soil is really like sandy and light, so it should be fine for carrots and parsnips and stuff. Um, so what the next task to do is, I've just cleared off this end with all the weeds. And as you can see, I've got my turnips. The, um, like you say, root veg. That's all this bed's going to be now. It's just a root veg uh, bed. So I'm going to do a row of purple top Milan 
I want to do a row of um, the white top, um, the snowball, and I want to see what other things I can sew direct. And I'm just going to sew them all at the same time. Slap on the wrist, but I'm not bothered. I'm going to see what else I can get in this section here. So I've got this bed all sorted and also planted out. So we've got carrots in between these rows of beetroot. I've got two rows of the invitation swede coming down here. Um, I got some, sorry, no, I got one side is snowball, one side is uh, purple top Milan. I've got two rows of invitation swede. I've also got some two rows of lettuce. And I've also got two rows of peas as well. So the peas on the mounds, we'll just see what comes of these basically, because like I say, just a bit of spare ground. So we'll do a bit of direct sowing and see what becomes of them. I'm just going to start watering all my leeks and onions. That's why the hose is on there now. And I'm just going to have a bit of a tidy up before I head home. So that's everything tidied up. I just want to show you something of a surprise when I came into the greenhouse and just had a quick look around here. So the begonias that I planted a while ago on the 16th of the 3rd are starting to flower. So we've got a white one here, which looks lovely. So I've just spun that around so we can see it when it comes in. So if one is on its way, the rest will not be soon to follow. Then I'll be able to sort them out because I mixed them up, didn't I? <laughs> so there, there you go. Um, just while I'm over here, the marigolds, as you can see, are reacting well after I give them the, the crunch. Nip the tops off. So they see they're promoting side growth there, which is great. Um, so they've also had a drink there as well. Are the marrows that I'm going to be putting in the next door's bed. So as you can see there, they are coming on really well. Which is really good. Starting to come out the bottom of the pot there. So it'll not be long until they're ready to go out into the grounds. May start putting them out next week actually. But they're doing all right. The, the geraniums are starting to flower as well. So they'll be going into the garden. So like I said earlier, them three beds are all done. I just need to get them marrows in. Which I'll start hardening them off in the next few days. So I'm pleased with that. And cauliflower. Now I did just have one off. I'll just step over here. This one here I've had open. I've had a look to see if there's any curds in here, and it looks good news. As you can see, curds are starting to form. That's what the head of the cauliflower was called. I hope it is anyways. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> so they're coming on all right. I've got to plant out them holes with broccoli next time I'm down. That's the first task I'll be getting on with. So yeah, that's them um, done. That's the garden done. i put a little cage over the top of there to help stop the birds from climbing on top of it and um, everything's had a good water and a good drink i've been in here and i've opened up all the the leaks so i've opened up all of the the, the flat flutes there so i see the greenery and i've given everything a good spray with dynamic and also um bumper to prevent the the, the rust so that's a, i've done also done being in here and i've done the same again so what i've gotten in here and i've opened them all up and open them up as well. Everything's had a good drink. So, one bit of good news we got last week on the uh, Facebook site is that actually the Benedictine um, show, which is the earliest show that I know of, 2nd of August, is going to go ahead in Cromlin. Um, so that's a leak, oh, a leak and onion open show. Um, so if anybody watches and anybody wants to head along, 2nd of August at the St. Benedictine um, in Cromlin, Northumberland. Um, so that show is to go ahead, starting at Judgeons from 10 o'clock till 12, with the hope to open the show from 12 o'clock onwards. Benchon is £5, um, and there's mixed um, categories. You've got two pot leaks, two intermediate leaks, uh, one heavy onion, and uh, I think there's two blanche leaks as well. Um, so there's four categories with that, £5 per bench. Um, so... I'll be heading down, whether or not I've got anything to put in, I don't think I will do, because the stuff here, it's not ready, it'll not be ready. Uh, I'll have stuff that's 12, 13 uh, inches big. I'll see what I've got in any case, I'm going to start blanching a few things up, um, for, uh, like I said, so I can get the nice white barrel, because um, as far as I'm aware, I've not been told any otherwise, my Lee Club shows are not it's still to go ahead, um, until I'm told otherwise, I'll still carry on as if they're going to go ahead in any case um right that's me done for the day i'll catch us over the next few days morning guys it's now uh wednesday morning i'm just going down the pub very quick i've got a delivery coming down i'll show you that when i get to you um i'm just i've just finished planting out the 
broccoli in amongst the cauliflowers and uh, just as I was having a look over the top I showed you last week one of them had actually um, started to form the curd well take a look at this one <laughs> hey look at that hey I can grow cauliflower <laughs> so what I'm going to do next here I'm going to wrap all of these up and I'm going to keep it nice and tight stop it from bolting basically so that's what the next task is right I've just had a delivery here big dumpy bag full of drainage off cuts so they will come in handy whether it be for watering or anything like that um if you get sick go, potentially grow carrots in them and stuff but see what i can do with them as the time goes time comes um but that's it for the day i've got to go and sort out some more sweet peas here which i'll show you again even though i've just taken load the other day can't keep up with them man <laughs> can't keep up with them I need to keep on cutting them because if I don't, they'll all go to seed and the plant will start going to seed as well. So I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to quickly get another handful here and I'll deliver that to my mum. So yeah, not a lot happening today. Um, plans for the for the weekend and stuff. Um, let's see what I can get done for the, out the rest of the week. Hi everybody, it is now Saturday evening, I've just finished work, it's about 10 past 8. Um, I want to give you a heads up and see exactly what's happening on the um, hashtag carrot bottle challenge. Um, and I'll show you what mine's happening with mine after just 6 days. So the two I've got here under the Mars Hydro light, as you can see, nothing happening in there. I did another one actually, I think that's this one, so that's a few days later. But, look on this one, we've got two... Two carrots coming up. Da, 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 da. Fantastic. They weren't there this morning when I came in. I'm trying to check around everything. And if I have a look on the, this one here, under the spider format, nothing quite yet, but means nothing that at the moment. So that's what's happening with them. Uh, and I will be giving you updates on these uh, in due course. But we have germination. It has officially started. Yeah, so I'm pleased with that. Um, Leslie's been down to my plot today and she has sent me a picture of uh, her bounty, which I'll just put here. Um, she's doing really well. She's got herself a carrot and also a spring onion, I think that is as well. So that's the two things I should put in herself for in our beds that were already prepared. So she's done all right, actually, and she's got plenty of stuff going through. So they were just testers that she put in. Um, it's actually made me want to start actually pulling one of my carrot bottles up. So I'm going to go and actually empty mine out now and we'll have a look and see which what they're like, the ones I put in in, uh, I think it was February. So this is me carrot bottle. I'm going to take this off now. Look at the root system at the bottom. Look at that. <laughs> curly, curly, curly. <laughs> so I'm going to take this out of here now and we'll see what it's like. So it didn't actually take much taking out of the bottle. Just a couple of shakes and stuff like that. As you can see, look at that. <laughs> Bottle shaped. <laughs> I'm going to get the carrot out here and let's have a look at it. Here we are, the reveal. <laughs> There's the carrot. Just in compost. Looks like it's starting to um, push back the root, the top root, still there, all in one tact. So it's like a little stump carrot. <laughs> But there we go. It's a carrot to say the least. I'll be able to have a snack on that. <laughs> so that's with one pop bottle. We've got two on the go at the minute. So I'm expecting this to be a bit longer, a bit better. But uh, not bad for a first attempt. Like I say, considering I transplanted this, um, not bad. Um, like I say, I haven't tr transplanted these ones because these ones are sown direct. So we'll see what comes of them. But it's a good starting point in any case. Right. I'm going to go and have my tea, I'm going to go and see the kids, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Morning everybody, it's Sunday morning. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, grandparents, single mothers, whatever you want to be called. Happy Father's Day. Um, I've got visitors on the plot today, and they're going to give us a hand for the next couple of hours. I've got a few tasks I want to get done, marrows in, things like that. So uh, Leslie's down with the kids. She's uh, sporting old school Dean's Lost the Plot top. Which is too big for us, so we'll just get our belly out for a change. <laughs> so we're going to get cracked on very quickly here and fly through these jobs. Chris, Evans, Dean, Roberts, your packages are there. I am sending them off. I've been to the post office three times 
The first time I went, they were closed on Thursday, because Thursdays are the only day they're closed, apart from Sundays. Second time Leslie went down, they were closed, should have five o'clock. Second time, because I've been at work all week, and the third time I've been down this morning, they're closed, because I thought it was Saturday. I will get them sent off. I'm going to reopen them and give them another drink, but I will get these sent off. They're ready to go. I just need to get the post office open. <laughs> Very quickly, I'll give you an update on there, but also as I've come past here, I've spotted a bit of white, and so as you can see as well, Another cauliflower. I'm going to get that covered over. Looks like I've got two ready to go. And I'll have a quick look at the other ones as well. Hi Sky, you alright sweetheart? Yeah, just come behind. Alright, okay, no bother. Well, let's have a quick look on here. So the peas have not come through yet. But what has come through are all the sweet and all the brassicas that I've put in. So as you can see here, yeah, after a couple of days, we've got one row there. We've got one row here. We've got another row here. Another row here, these are the invitation, these ones. Um, Swede, 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 fantastic. Carrots are not come up yet, but everything else is doing fine in here. But I'm amazed how quickly they've come up. Absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna weed in between them. Um, obviously, because I've got a bit, a few things here, but it's amazing now they've come up so fast. Um, so direct zone, fantastic this time of year. Got my glamorous assistant here. <laughs> She's busy. De weeding out where the sunflowers are because she's going to put some of the um, the marigolds that's over there in between they're just at the front here so we'll have a nice display across the bottom here these sunflowers are going crazy the titan ones they're getting really big so i'm pleased with them but they're blocking the light off for all of the lilies that i've got at the back so i'm gonna to have to find a new home for the lilies might have to just put them down the back of that section there until this marrow bed because these will not get these shouldn't get that far by the time that these get um, the flowers come out because they're nearly ready to come out there now um, but I'll have to have a think of where to put them at the minute I might even just put them inside the tunnel uh, just to get them covered yeah I'm going to do that anyways time to get cracked on girls are doing a really good job in here they're finished oh, I'll have to come around and have a look and inspect the task I give the girls was to clear out the weeds on the bottom um, there's a few down there there's a nettle down there Sky so just be careful with your hands there um, the rest of it, well done, Elizabeth. I've my hand off now. Yeah, be careful. Um, we're going to now. I need you to get rid of the weeds. The weeds need to go in the compost bin. All right. So I'll show you where they go. Kids these days, look at them with their phones in their hands. Well, I've got my phone in my hand recording. <laughs> Bit of a hypocrite. <laughs> what I'm doing now? I'm busy getting the pots ready for to plant out the giant tomatoes. Um, all I'm doing is turn these pots upside down. I've cut the bottoms off the um, ten litre buckets. I'm going to put the potato. I'm going to put the tomato in, and then I'm going to fill it around it with fresh compost, so that of course um, the obviously the the roots come from the stem so it'll help it out a bit more and then it can go down into the trench as well so i'm going to get that done i'm going to what i'm going to be using i'm going to be using the mills dna ultimate soil with pork this the bag that i've got spare um so i'm going to use that for the giant tomatoes uh, and i'm also going to do the same when it comes to the time to put them in for the giant cucumbers as well but let's get this sorted out <laughs> done so thanks for the help of leslie it went up and after i and cleaned all the path down as well with the hand brush because i can't uh, find my other brush and um, the giant tomatoes are all planted out now some may say these are close together i would agree but i want to get um i've got that space there for two uh two cucumbers um so pleased with that um these should only get to realistically about there that high because i'm only having them a couple of trusses up because that's where the the, fir the first two trusses is where the giant um blooms come on um now there is a proper name for them but i cannot remember what the name is off the top of my head it's basically when the, the flowers fuse together and create a giant tomato and like that one there i like the look of that one that's a nice one so what i'll do is see like so that one's a single one i'll just take that off because that's not going to fuse with the other ones and that means the plant will put all its energy into that one bloom. And the beauty in here as well is, I've got all of these giant tomatoes next to each other, so they'll pollinate, the bees and everybody will pollinate them together. 
I've already got one here as well, which is actually starting to show the flower. You can see there, that's a double, double header one. So, should have a few options for giant tomatoes. This should work a lot better as well. I've got them buried down. They're in the mill's um, ultimate DNA, soil with soil. Um, ultimate soil with DNA, should I say? Well, you know what I mean, DNA ultimate soil, that's the one. Look at the bag there. <laughs> but we've also, um, I've lost the leak here as well. <clears throat> it was starting to rot from the bottom. So I've got something else to put in there. The leaks aren't doing too good this year. But once again, there'll be no leaks in here next year. I'll be doing them a little bit different. Lessons learned. But as for this, very pleased. Quick update here with the, uh, the sweet kernel carrots in the uh, airport, as you can see. Each station is germinated successfully. I've got at least one on each station there. So fantastic. I'm going to actually do another couple of these and uh, find space for them. I might, um, I say, just find, I mean, I've got a few spaces here I can put stuff in. So I could even just put one in the corner or something like that. I don't know. But I'll say that that's what I'm going to do though. Because um, I want to have a few catch crops of, uh, not catch crops, I want a few succession sowings for carrots. And uh, I'm finding it enjoyable growing them in these. Uh, these tubs. Speaking of carrots and tubs, let's have a quick peek and see what's going on in here. Oh, look at this. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's strange. Anybody know what this is for when we're premiere tonight? Put it in the comments. That's quite interesting. Anyhow, let's have a look. So these are the ha uh, Harlequin. So these are the mixture of uh, different colour carrots. So I know that's a purple one there, so I'm going to leave that in because there's not many purple ones in here. I do need to thin these out, but yeah, let's have a look at this one there. So, just pull that gently. There we go. Come there, big top, little bottom. <laughs> pull a couple here. Hey, yeah, not too bad. So that's the whole thing, then. I've got the other ones at the back here. I've got to de weed some of these to be honest. Oh, sorry about that. Hey, there we go, not too bad then. Let's have a de weed a few, let them get a bit bigger. They'll be lovely and straight. The experiment that I originally started with the one liter pop bottles, the carrots, they're coming on all right. I've given them a drink because I've been in here for few days and I haven't uh, I haven't been down more of them. The onions are doing alright in the auto pots and the auto pot system. It is working. Um I've turned the, the water and off so because it's a bit moist in there now so I'm um, gonna we'll leave that in there but they're doing alright. Um, the other onions which are left to fend for themselves in the ground they're starting to put a bit of bulk on they're from Pete Edwards back garden and I've still got six more to find homes for so we'll see what happens with them six in this greenhouse. Next task, very quickly, I'm going to get the giant pumpkin in, as you can see on the floor here. It's absolutely flying away. And if I quickly show you the one that's already in the ground, it's doing uh, not too bad. So, with the help of Leslie here, I'm going to put some feeds in the ground, and I'm going to get this um, pumpkin put in the ground now. Well, that was frustrating. A pit time lapse. I've had a nine second video of me digging, and then it just cut off. I think it was because the um, button's in my pocket, which is no good. Um, right, so that's that one in. I've uh, buried the, the vine as well. Um, and the ends, I've just put a couple of sticks to keep that down so it's not lifting up. Um, I've just done the same with that one on that side as well. So these are well on their way. Um, this one here is already getting a female plant on it, female section on it. So there's the first female one there. So when that gets a bit bigger, um, as soon as I get a, a section off here, um, I'll probably pollinate that one, unless, uh, unless told to otherwise. Um, and that'll be the, one of the first giant pumpkins in here. So this is going to go crazy, this. Uh, um, I don't think this area is going to be big enough for two, to be honest. Um, so I will just have to see how things go. Right, time to get the marrows in next door. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi. You want to come help us put the marrows in? Yeah. Good job. It's not raining now, so I'm going to go outside and get these marrows planted next door. Um, as you can see, they're doing really well. Re they're do doing really well. Uh, I've got a few really good um, seeds. So I'm hoping 
to get a few decent plants out of these. Let's see, it's no shows or nothing, so we'll see what happens. Actually, there is, I'm doing a virtual show, which I'll tell you about uh, after I've planted these out. So we're gonna get the marrows in now. Um, two on that side and one on this side. I'm just gonna feed the ground first with some calcified seaweed and some blood fish and bone, just in the area where I'm gonna plant. And then I'm going to plant them out with the help of my two lovely assistants. <laughs> well, very frustratingly, the camera done it again. Halfway through, cut off. Don't know why, my camera, I, I turned the Bluetooth off, so I don't know why it's cut off. Anyhow, right, that's this all done. The marrows are in. So I've got three different types of marrow here. This one here is from third place from Marvin last year. Sold on the first of the fifth. It's that one. I've got the other ones here. This one here is Lee Herriton's marrow from uh, C Batch. That's just in there. And I've also got this one here, which was uh, the bags record, UK record. That's where it was from. And that one is here as well. Not as big, not very big, but they will, once they get into the ground, start shooting away there. So I've also put some uh, water hose down as well for later on, make things a little bit easier to water. These are soaker hoses. I've got spare, which I'll be putting down um, over on the pumpkin bed. So I wanna go over there and, uh, in fact, I'm not gonna do it today, I'll do it another time. I'm gonna see what else we can get quickly get done here before we go for dinner. Hi, Leslie. Another quick task knocked off the list. Um, Elizabeth gladly reminded us that we needed to cover our strawberries over. The birds were going to get them. Um, these are late cropping variety, um, which as you can see, there's some cracking strawberries on them already. Just been in and de-weeded them just before there. So uh, yeah, done a very good job. So I've just put that cover over the top. I did forgot I did extend these, didn't I? <laughs> so um, they'll be, uh, what are they called? Oh, I can't remember what the word is, but never mind. Um, Birds can get them ones instead of getting the ones that's under there. Um, so yeah, that's that sorted out as well. I seem to find myself a pretty rose in between the sweet peas here. <laughs> Don't shake your head. <laughs> Is it, look at this, look at the sweet peas again, man. Uh, it, 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 honestly, it's a daily thing now, trying to get all of these off. Well, I'm gonna take these off and take another bouquet for my mum and a bouquet for the house. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you what Leslie's been up to, and then I'm gonna sign off for this week. Been left a little star and she's uh, started putting the marigolds out. So I've got some marigolds at the front here, and um, she's already been in here as well. And what she's done is she's put marigolds, she's tidied up all these little beds here, and uh, she's put the marigolds and also the Livingston daisies in the front. Uh, sorry, yeah, the Livingston daisies in the front here. Um, so we've got all of them. Um, obviously, she's giving us a hand putting the, the pumpkins in. Uh, I've got this to sort out to do, but uh, she's also been over here and also sorted out this bed here all the way down so it's going to be a lovely bit of colour going across here um, so it's done an absolute cracking job on there so I'm very thankful um, I've still got to water a few things next week um, I'll see if I can get in and tackle this even if it takes us all week I'll see if I can do that very quickly just in this middle greenhouse here the tomatoes are doing fantastic we've got another truss on the top I've given these another feed uh, with some comfrey um, and the straw, the, sorry, strawberries, not strawberries, the tomatoes, too, as you can see here, Shirley tomatoes, they're coming on leaps and bounds here, which is fantastic. Uh, some nice trusses on here for the tomatoes. So I'm just looking forward to seeing how these get on um, over the next few weeks. Uh, I've still got to come in and tie the rest of them up at the top because, as you can see, the last time that I was in, um, they've grown about a foot. So I need to get that sorted out. But that's the job I'll do next week. Beetroot's starting to pick up. Leaves are starting to get really healthy as well. There's plenty of leafage, plenty of new growth on here, which is fantastic. And I'm sure, of course, these beets are getting larger. And um, once again, this is just experimentation. I've never grown these before, so we'll see what happens with them. But uh, they're starting to they're still grown, which is great. None of them gone. None of these ones are gone to seed yet. Giant carrots. I need to get in here and de weed around the tops. As you can see, there's plenty of nettles and stuff. Uh, I've had a I've had a quick peek at this one and uh, yeah it's doing all right it's starting to produce new growth on the sides which is exactly what i'm after we want a mutant carrot that's what we're after so we'll have to see what happens with them so uh these three are doing all right that one's doing all right the end one not so much the rain's been on and off all day I'm trying to get in here quickly hold on very quickly i'll show you the onions so these are my own saved seed let's see if they put any weight on they were just under 16 inches last week sorry for the tape measure being upside down Put them around here, and as you can see, 
they've put on half an inch so that's good going so 16 and a half inches round that's the biggest one the rest of them are probably going to be measuring around about um 13 no so not too bad i'm pleased with the way they are i've got one that's definitely crossed with a peter glaze book by the looks of it and i'll show you the reason why i think why well, this is about the rain it is really coming down really heavily now now this one here is from the same batch from the same seed and if you look at it you can see it's got actually got a really tall neck and it's got a different shape but they're all from the same seed so it's a quite peculiar so that one there so these ones this one in the yellow bucket this one in the yellow bucket obviously all the ones in the yellow bucket here are all from the same seed onion which i'll just quickly put it i found a picture of it the other day so i'll just do a side by side comparison here so that's from the seed from 2019 Bloody hell, this rain is coming down. <laughs> and this one here is from the parent plant. So I'll put the picture up here so you can see. So that one there, it's quite strange how we've got this one here, which doesn't look nothing like it. But we'll have to wait and see what happens with them. Let's go and hide. Uh, actually, it's absolutely pouring on rain. So let's end, this, uh, end the video for this week. Bloody Nora. <laughs> My goodness! Right, well that's me done for this week. Thanks to Leslie and the kids for coming down and helping out. Um, I was mentioning before about the show. Uh, we're going to have a virtual show on Facebook. Um, together, us and also the, the Northeast Giant and Show Vegetable Group. Uh, alongside the Southwest Giant and Show Vegetable Group. They were coming together to do a virtual show at the end of September. So um, if you take a look over on Facebook, for those that are on there, um, take a look at the announcement, and if you want to get involved, by all means, feel free to do so. It's free, it's a bit of fun, I want to take it as such, so I hope to see you all over there. Um, this week has been a bit difficult because I've been at work five days a week, five day a week this week, from Tuesday on through all the way through till Saturday, working late, from home by the time i getting things sorted in the morning I haven't really getting much to be able to do for content so apologies for that um, next week once again is going to be a trouble week a difficult week the reason for that is that last week we received a phone call for uh, from the hospital for little sky um, now long term viewers of the show uh, the show the show long term viewers of the channel will know that sky two years ago had an operation on her feet uh, she has what's called flat feet the arches of her feet instead of being like that are flat so it means that our knees basically pulling um, towards each other. We did seven years of trying to get the corrected with insoles in our shoes and it didn't work. Second option was surgery to insert screws in our feet to try and correct our feet. Um, two years later, one side has collapsed and it's causing problems. Um, so before it causes any further problem in the bone, we needed to get that out. Them out now. We did have a consultation um, a month before the pandemic, um, but obviously with everything that's going on we didn't know what was going to happen so that phone call last week was a blessing so they're going on wednesday sky's going to go in on wednesday for our operation as long as she passes the antibody test which is going for on monday so this coming wednesday the live video may not be on um but i will keep you informed have a look on the facebook and also on youtube as well to see if that's going to go ahead uh, fingers crossed i don't see why there shouldn't be um because sky should be home by the evening it just depends on how comfortable she is um Thank you everybody for watching and subscribing this week. We're close to uh, 3,000 subs. Um, I think it's 100 away. Climbing up there. It's fantastic to see all the new people, all the messages once again. So thanks everybody for watching this week. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for putting the thumbs up on all the videos as well. It does really help and it means a lot. Um, I shall see you all next week with some form of content in any case. Um, I will be starting to do a fortnightly video uh, on both the Spider Farmer and also the Mars Hydro Light. So have, keep an eye out for the updates for them as it will be on separate videos. So take care, stay safe, watch what you're doing and I'll see you all on the next one. So search for Dean's Lost the Plot on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Then next to the subscribe button, you hit the bell. Then click all that is at the top and then you'll be notified upon every video that I upload. Mm -hmm.